All right. Uh, I'm Julian Herrera. I'm here to talk about visually building your UI, coding your logic, and using the best tool for the job. Uh, my talk's really short, so I'll have the introduction be pretty brief. Uh, my background was in visual effects, and that ended up involving a lot of uh, tool building for artists. And at Clutch, I'm really excited to continue to build tools now for designers, developers, and entrepreneurs as well. Uh, I obviously really enjoy building tools and talking about tools, so that's what we're going to do here today. Uh, for those not familiar with Clutch, Clutch is a visual builder for the Jamstack. It combines the speed of design tools with the power of code. We embrace code fully and expect people to use it. Uh, we also think that front end is uh, kind of a difficult space to, uh, to work in. It can be time consuming, slow, costly. And we think at the root of that problem, it's a tooling issue. And that's why we decided to build a tool. Uh, we're going to get started just by looking at an image. So uh, I want you all to ask yourselves, um, how was this made? I know it sounds like a trick question. It's not. You're probably thinking an artist opened a graphic design tool and illustrated it, and you'd be 100% right. It's that obvious. They opened a tool for the task they were trying to accomplish and did that task in this dedicated tool and created a great design. Really, that tool makes a bunch of markup. Illustrators generate millions of lines of markup code every single day using a Wacom tablet. We don't go around calling them no-code illustrators. They're just illustrators. Uh, they do uh, great work in this tool, and they're able to do better work in this tool. If we gave an illustrator either Figma or Illustrator, or we gave them Notepad and said, hey, make us a drawing, it's not about the, the tool making it easier. It's about making it possible, making it capable for them to realize their vision of what they want to build or design in this case. Let's take a look at another image. And uh, this is another design. It's visual. I want everyone to ask themselves that same question. How is this made? Some of you are now wondering, OK, well, if it's a mock-up, maybe Figma. That's kind of a question we don't ask the illustrator. We're not like, is that your real illustration? Or is that like going to be your real illustration? They're like, that's my illustration. Get out of here. And so you have this, OK, let's say it's, now we say it's real. I'll tell you it's real. And you're like, OK, well, thank you for that. Then it was probably VS Code, a terminal, some code. And you know, in that case, you'd be right. We have some more markup. The problems that this markup has are similar to the ones we had with the illustration. I couldn't look at that markup and identify at all what the image was going to be. I can look at this and gain a little bit of information about what it's going to be, but it's not the same as seeing the actual dashboard design. It's, it's not a good representation of this visual task. So if visual tools are so great, why aren't they you know, everywhere? Why isn't everyone using them to create uh, their designs, to create their UXs? A lot of tools in the you know, no-code space are not about this. They're not about being empowering. They're like, oh, this is difficult? Let's make it so anybody can do this. If you give uh, somebody who has no art skills Illustrator or Photoshop, they're not going to generate great art. They're just going to fiddle around with a paintbrush and give you bad art in a great tool. So the visual tool itself has to be about empowering the user and actually having them accomplish their tool. And that might make the tool more difficult might have a higher learning curve, but it should empower you at every step, and it should allow you to have creative freedom. So this no-code situation is kind of a pickle, because really what's happening, and the difference between uh, illustration and visual UX design, is this added state, this time state. You use an application. It changes over time, this logic bit that hangs people up. How do you deal with logic? in a place where you want to work visually. And so that puts people into one, one of two places, right? either limiting what you can do, creating interfaces for it just to make sure you never touch code. We've all identified the same problem. Front end building is difficult. It's time consuming. It can be slow. Uh, it's costly. Uh, and, but we've identified different problems. On one side, it's like code is the problem. Code is why it's costly. Code is why it's slow. Code is why we can't scale. And on the other side, it's you know limit things. Let's build UXs around stuff and make sure that you avoid it in that way. Um, so if you take a look at this slide, 
we basically have a temperature converter that is, took longer to put together. I couldn't copy and paste from Stack Overflow. I had to you know, snap, snap it together. Uh, the comment alone tells me what this is going to do, and, and pretty much anybody is comfortable with that amount of code, even if they're just you know, not familiar or even not fully uh, developers themselves. And that's not to say every tool that's visual in the front end building space is uh, completely for non-professional work. There are professional tools out there that are visual, some of them very well dedicated to their task at hand. Um, so currently working in professional work and uh, trying to decide between code or no code, you can create your mockups, your designs in Figma, but where things get messy in Figma is in the prototyping stage. Designers rightfully want to see their work in full fidelity. They want to see every state, every hover state, every active nav link state, but when you actually wire it up so that your prototype clicks through everything, you have something that was harder than actually coding it. And, and the worst is when you ask a designer for a small change, and they look at this thing that is now so wired up, and they, they start to move some stuff, and they're like, actually, let me just make a note so we don't take time here. And you're like, the whole point was to work fast. And you added logic, and to avoid writing code, and to avoid these things, you're now in a mess of prototyping stage. Webflow is another professional tool that does great marketing sites. But again, this logic factor is why I have to say they make great marketing sites. You're not going to see the next Uber built in Webflow. You're not going to see the next, uh, you know, name a popular app, Notion. They're not going to be built in Webflow. It's designed very specifically for a task, which is what great tools do. But when it comes to logic, this avoidance of code is partially part of the problem. So at Clutch, we asked ourselves, why not both? Why can't we have both code and a visual uh, editor for some of the visual tasks? In fact, that's not really a new idea at all. I described this to, some, this to someone yesterday, and they're like, kind of like ActionScript? And I was like, yeah. In the days of Flash, Flash didn't die because developers didn't like it. It was fun to work with. Flash died for a number of other reasons. This is also not new in the gaming space. If you look at the most popular game engine, Unity, you still have a visual experience. You have this 3D editor. You bring in objects and models. And then you attach scripts to them, and those are code. It's like logic is well expressed in code, and maybe visual stuff is better expressed visually. We can have this. Uh, we can have this. So what a visual experience, what a visual experience with code means is access to NPM, access to tens of thousands of React components that are ready to go, visual, that you can now drag and drop and interact with on an infinite canvas, much like Figma. It means being able to integrate with existing websites, exporting out because they're just React components. It means uh, being able to collaborate with product designers who are now able to see their design systems in a format that's familiar to them. They can pan and zoom and move around it like Figma, but each of these frames is an actual React component with properties that can be edited visually on a canvas. The other advantages are also to the non-devs. If you take some of these React components and you add some metadata, uh, metadata around them and package them, you can take things that are inaccessible to product designers and make them accessible to them. There is a lot of stuff on NPM that's drag and drop ready if it's just made to be so. You can just drag out a map and it's the real thing. You can just drag out um, Lottie animations, at, you know, every back end you want. So we're here at this conference. And tools like Contentful, like Strappy, like Sanity are all, are all represented here, and all of them work great in Clutch. It's, it's a stack. And the thing about the no-code space and the visual code space is a lot of them are monoliths, and it's not you know, jam monolith, it's jam stack. So we want to fit in with the stack and, and collaborate and let you use, again, going to the theme, the best tool for the job. That might mean picking one of the many companies here, and especially the more dedicated they are to a specific goal, probably the better tool that is for that job. The problem is that code is often like a hammer. And when you have a hammer, everything's a nail. So you're like, I'm going to solve this with code. I'm going to solve that with code. And these tools come along, and they offer you a paintbrush. And when it came to painting the walls, dipping your hammer in a bucket of paint and just slapping it against the wall was not great. Uh, and so you're like, oh my god, this paintbrush is life-changing. I can now paint really well. But you go to hang up a painting, and you're like, this sucks. Why did this person give me a paintbrush but take my hammer? You can add to your toolbox, and these, a lot of these companies here represent that. It's picking a new tool for your toolbox, putting them all together, and tackling problems by applying the best possible solution to each one. When you're empowered by a tool dedicated to a task, you get benefits. 
like we, had, like we said with the Illustrator, it was actually being able to generate a better illustration than if they just had Notepad. It wasn't to make it easier. This lowers the barrier to entry. If the only way to generate digital art was to type it out on Notepad, we would have a lot less digital art and a lot more of it would just be like rectangles and triangles with, with filled colors. So this, bar this lowered barrier to entry means product designers, entrepreneurs are in clutch building things, growing companies, uh, and hiring developers at times for maybe some of the small logic or to put together some kits or to build their own Wix rather than saying, here's this, these limits that, that are put up for you. It also means work isn't wasted. There is a certain amount of work in Figma where they go too far that's just like, cool, that's gonna get thrown away. It would take less time to wire up nav links to just do it. React Router gives you a nav link. It works, it's great, it's fantastic, and we can give you some places to style. If we make that experience visual, you're empowered to not take up the dev's time on these tasks and to tweak and to be pixel perfect as designers as you should be uh, in a collaborative and real-time environment. So the takeaway here is just as you would think someone is crazy for coding an illustration, you should find them crazy for still coding interfaces and even crazier when they try to draw logic. That's an actual Figma screenshot that's gone too far. So if you agree with this philosophy, this approach to front-end building, I encourage you to check us out at clutch.io uh, and check out our tool. And uh, I'll be around if anyone has any questions.